Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar, which is an overview of the new Quantopian contest. Today's speaker is Jamie McCorston. He is a data analyst on the product team at Quantopian. Most recently, he worked with the Quantopian investment team to design the new contest. Um, previously, Jamie worked at the Network Dynamics Lab where he focused on measuring and modeling large-scale human behavior of online communities and he graduated from McGill University with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Biology. Thanks, Jamie. All right, thanks, Paige. Uh, hey, everyone, thanks for joining today. Um, as Paige mentioned, we're gonna be talking about, the, or I guess I'm gonna be talking about the new contest that we just opened up for submission. Uh, before I get going, I do wanna say a quick disclaimer that what I'm saying, or what I'm gonna talk about is not investment advice. Uh, it is just an overview of the contest and, and the rules that go with it. Um, so yeah, last week uh, we, we opened up our, our new, what we're calling the Quantopian Contest. Uh, for, it's now open for submission, and uh, I've been talking about it in the forums for a bit before, uh, but the big reveal last week is that we are going to be doing daily prizes. So the um, essentially, we're running this competition where we evaluate strategies written on our platform, on the Quantopian platform, and then each day, um, submitted algorithms get run through um, automated testing to see if they meet a particular set of criteria. And then of those that meet the criteria, they are ranked based on a score at the end of each day. And the top 10 scored participants uh, will be awarded a daily uh, a cash prize. So uh, one of the things that uh, is new with this contest is a, a brand new dashboard, which we've, uh, which you're looking at right now, I believe, uh, I, at least I hope that's what you can see on my screen. Um, and so I'm, I'm gonna walk through this first um, and kind of go through, go over some of the rules in a little more detail. Uh, and then I'm gonna go through uh, the, a new contest tutorial, which went out a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how you can tell if you meet the criteria of the contest. Um, and then I guess finally, I will open it up for questions at the end. Uh, and I do wanna say, if you have questions along the way, I think you can type them into the webinar and uh, like ask, ask them as you have them and feel free to interrupt me. Um, uh, with that though, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by looking at this, uh, looking through this dashboard and kind of walking you through uh, both the rules and sort of how you're going to be able to interact with the contest going forward. So um, I mentioned, so this is kind of like a, an overview of how things are going to work. Essentially at any point you can enter uh, an algorithm that you write on the platform to the contest. Um, you can track your performance, which means you can see both if you pass the criteria and then there will be a leaderboard updated on a nightly basis. Uh, and then anything you win, you can actually, there's a, there's a little my winning section here on the dashboard. And uh, right now the contest hasn't actually begun awarding prizes that will start on February 16th. Um, so right now it's, it's just open for submission because of that zero winnings. Um, and we have this leaderboard that um, going forward, starting on the 16th as well, it will start updating on a nightly basis, showing the, the top 10 winners as well as uh, your, um, where, where your entries rank if you're not in the top 10. Um, all right, so I guess the, the next section here is the prizes. So uh, as I mentioned, each day, uh, or I guess each trading day, we'll be awarding cash prizes to the top 10 participants um, in these denominations. So they're $50 to first, for uh, first place down to $5 to 10th uh, place. And again, these are, these are daily prizes. So uh, there's nothing that stops you from winning, you know, 50 consecutive days in a row. Um, I think uh, for those of you who are familiar with our old contest, there were some rules around that. In the new one, you can win as many days in a row as you want. Um, all right, so the, the next one here is this, uh, is the criteria of the new contest. So this is this is a big change um, from uh, our, our old contest. And, and if you're new here, um, this is, uh, th these criteria are very much in line with our, uh, our allocation process. So again, if you're new, you may not know, but um, Quantopian uh, uh, offers allocations to selected algorithms from our platform. Um, there's a very rigorous testing process that uh, that we use to uh, to hand out these allocations, but these criteria used in the contest are very much in line with um, a, a big part of uh, the testing that we do 
when looking for those allocate or when looking to hand out those allocations. So um, these uh, one thing that these criteria have in common with each other is that they are they can be evaluated over an in sample back test. What that means is when you submit an algorithm to the contest, we can actually tell right away uh, based on a back test whether these criteria are met. So um, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go through them one at a time here um, and kind of maybe give a little explanation as to why it's a rule and uh, uh, technically also like what the exact rule is. So uh, the first one here is returns. Uh, your algorithm must make money. I don't think that one needs too much of a why, uh, why it's needed. Um, but the technical requirement is that over a two-year back test running uh, from two years ago to the day you submit, um, your algorithm must have positive returns. Now, that, that two-year back test is actually something that's common to all of these criteria. So um, when you submit to the contest, we run a two-year back test on your algorithm with default slippage and commissions. Um, and these criteria are checked over that two-year period. Uh, now, we did open the contest for submission, so you can actually enter uh, your algorithms today. Um, that automated back test, the first one won't be run until the 16th when uh, the contest actually begins. But after the 16th, whenever you submit an algorithm, it will be uh, tested for these criteria later that night. Um, now, going back to the specific criteria, uh, so we talked about returns. The next one is leverage. So your, uh, your, the leverage of your algorithm uh, must be between 0 0.8 and 1.1x uh, at all times. Uh, there is a little grace period at the beginning of the back test where you have about five days to get into um, that 0 0.8 to 1.1 range. Um, the reason for this is that uh, we want all algorithms to be evaluated on the same uh, capital base. So when you, uh, the two-year back test that I mentioned runs with a $10 million uh, capital base, but there's no, uh, there's nothing in the back tester itself that either restricts leverage or requires you to spend a minimum amount. So this rule in the contest sort of puts everyone on the same playing field. The next one is uh, position concentration. Um, and this one is just simply your algorithm can't be uh, invest too much in any one name at one time. Uh, there's a lot of risk associated with being uh, over invested in a particular name. So for the contest, the maximum uh, that you can be invested in a, in a particular name is, is 5%. Uh, then there's beta to spy. So your uh, for those who are unfamiliar, beta to spy is essentially your algorithm's correlation to the market. Um, in, uh, in the contest, that correlation has to be less than 0 0.3 um, as an absolute value. So if you, uh, you actually can't be too strongly negatively correlated to the market either. We want uh, uh, the contest is uh, selecting for algorithms that are specifically uncorrelated to the market. Um, so you're your beta has to fall between negative uh, 0.3 and 0.3 at all times. Um, and then we have turnover, and that the turnover is measured as a mean daily turnover over a, uh, a three-month trailing uh, rolling window. Uh, so essentially, each day uh, over that two-year back test, we um, we compute the uh, the three-month mean uh, of your turnover, which is uh, essentially transactions dif divided by your um, your portfolio value uh, and that mean has to fall between 5 and 65 percent. Um, I will add a note that uh, the, the turnover measures both ins and outs which means um, if I actually trade uh, if, I, if I hold a if I have my 10 million invested in a particular set of names and then I sell all those positions and buy into a whole new set of positions, the turnover there will be 200%. Um, so five to 65% ends up meaning that your, uh, your average holding time is about uh, three to 40 days. Um, so the next one is uh, a long short requirement. Um, and your, so for the contest, your algorithms have to have uh, both long and short positions, and the, uh, the the value of your long positions has to be very similar to the value of your short positions at all times. The specific requirement is that you're not allowed to have a, oh, sorry, you must have a, a 
total portfolio value, both long and short, that's within 10% of each other in value. Uh, and that 10% is relative to the uh, to your total portfolio value. So, for example, I can be as as uh, skewed as 45% of my portfolio in short positions and 55% in long, or uh, vice versa. Uh, the liquid stocks requirement is simply that you have to uh, trade stocks in the uh, Q tradable stocks US, which is the sort of uh, base universe. Uh, defined on Quantopian. Um, I'll get into this in a little bit more detail later on, but uh, essentially just, it, it's, a, it's a filter for, um, for liquid stocks. Uh, the next is, uh, I'm, the next two actually are very related to each other, the sector and style risk. Uh, so if you haven't seen it yet, um, a couple of months ago, we uh, released a Quantopian risk model, uh, which is sort of a, uh, a representation of our view of risk on the market. Um, and it comes with uh, 16 different risk factors, uh, five style factors and 11 sector factors. Um, your algorithm or contest algorithms uh, must not be correlated to, uh, to these sector and style factors. Um, and I'll get into exactly what that means a little bit later on as well. but. Uh, similar to beta, uh, actually the, the sector risk factors, you, uh, the algorithm must be less than 0 0.2, uh, must have uh, an exposure of less than 0 0.2 to each of the sector factors and, uh, and less than 0 0.4 for each of the styles. Um, and like with beta, we look at the absolute value of the exposure. So your sector exposure must stay between negative 0.2 and positive 0.2 and the style the styles between negative 0.4 and positive 0.4. Uh, and the last requirement is the usage of uh, Optimize. So Optimize has been around on the platform for uh, almost a year now, I think. Um, and it is, uh, it's an ordering API on Quantopian where you can move your portfolio from one state to another by specifying an objective and a set of constraints. This is, you must place all of your orders in a contest algorithm using Optimize. And yeah, so I'll, I'll get into that one in a little bit more detail as well. Uh, just in general about all of these criteria, an algorithm must meet all of the criteria in order to be eligible uh, to participate in the contest. I mentioned the two-year backtest that gets kicked off when you submit an algorithm to the contest. We also run a, a, a new back test with the same start date as the two-year back test and tack on an extra day each night and retest the criteria on a nightly basis. So if an algorithm is in the contest, uh, it has to continue to, to meet these criteria in order to stay running. So that's the criteria. The, uh, the last section that I'm going to go over here is the scoring. So for all algorithms that meet the criteria in the contest, uh, they are ranked based on a score from the scoring function that you see here, uh, which is essentially based on out of sample returns and trailing volatility. So specifically what happens is uh, each day, once after you've uh, got an, uh, con an algorithm running in the contest, each day after it has been submitted, the, uh, the daily return of the algorithm is divided by the trailing 63 day volatility or 63 trading day volatility to compute uh, what I've been calling a VADR, volatility adjusted daily return or VADR for short. Um, and your, your contest submission score is the sum of its VADRs um, since, it's, since it was entered to the contest. So on the first day, that, that volatility adjusted daily return, will, your score will just be that value. The next day, it'll be the sum of your, uh, your two vaders and then your three vaders, et cetera, um, until you get up to 63 of them. So that, that's kind of how it works over the first 63 trading days. You strictly sum your vaders to get your, uh, your score. Um, and then after, the, after your submission has been in the contest for 63 trading days, your score always comes from the most recent 63 trading days. So you can think of it sort of as a, a window that's building up and then it becomes a sliding window. And we're always looking at those trailing 63 days. Um, the reason, the motivation for this scoring system is that we want 
Um, we want it to be exciting for people who are new to new to the contest. We want you to start building up score uh, uh, as soon as you enter, and we want it to be at least theoretically possible for you to win um, relatively quickly. Uh, at the same time, we want uh, we want people who have algorithms that have been running uh, consistently well for a long period of time to be rewarded as well. Um, in expectation, we're uh, I, I should say we're expecting to see the majority of the prize money go, going out to people in the category of having 63 trading days already, but we do expect some to go uh, sort of to people in that less than three month window who have just had a, a good start in the contest. Um, I don't know, have there been any, any questions yet at this point? No, okay, then I'm gonna keep going. Um, Oh, I should mention that uh, if you want the, the the very detailed version of the rules, uh, one thing that I sort of skipped on the criteria are that there uh, is sort of outlier guarding on each of them. So uh, we do sort of tolerate exceptions to some of the criteria once or twice in the back test. Um, and you can read the, the, like the fully technical version of the rules at this link here, which uh, was in the FAQ section. All right, I'm gonna move over to my next tab. So this is now the uh, the contest tutorial. So I got here by going to learn, uh, tutorials, uh, writing a contest algorithm, that brings me here. Um, the contest tutorial is written to uh, help you out if you're sort of one or two criteria away from, uh, from being eligible to enter the contest. So the, the first lesson gives kind of an overview like I just gave of the, the requirements, uh, submitting an algorithm, um, scoring and ranking, stuff like that. And then each lesson after that covers a specific, uh, a specific one of the criteria. So uh, I'm just gonna go through these uh, to, to give you a sense of what you can do for each criteria, or criterion, I should say. Um, so the first one here is the requirement of uh, using order optimal portfolio, which is uh, the core function in the optimize API in order to place your orders in the contest. Um, if you're unfamiliar with this function, I highly recommend going to the getting started tutorial. Uh, lesson seven in particular covers uh, placing orders with order optimal portfolio. There are also some, uh, some examples here that use it. Um, as I mentioned before, it's essentially uh, a tool where you can specify an objective function. The, the, the two that we have are um, maximize alpha and target portfolio weight, or target weights, I believe it's called now, um, as well as a series of constraints. And the, uh, the optimizer tries to, um, to solve the objective function that you've given, which, you know, in the case of maximize alpha is trying to maximize uh, the alpha values that you specify to it subject to the constraint, sorry, the constraints that you supply. Um, and yeah, so that the getting started tutorial lesson get, gives a sort of explanation walkthrough of how to use that and uh, these examples should also help with that. Uh, the next one is the liquid universe. I mentioned earlier the Q tradable stocks US. Um, if you want to learn more about what it's actually doing, I'd recommend going to uh, this link, which takes you to a post about the QTradable US. Um, meeting this criteria is usually pretty straightforward. Um, you can uh, create what's called a pipeline in your algorithm, which, uh, and, and provide a screen as the QTradable stocks US. If you're unfamiliar with pipeline, uh, there's a tutorial specifically around pipeline, but the getting started tutorial also sort of gets you through it uh, enough to, to, to set your Q tradable stocks US as your algorithms universe. Um, uh, I, I want to give a couple notes here about the, the Q tradable stocks US. The first is that it, it changes every day. Um, there are some names that, that get dropped uh, sometimes if they stop meeting a particular criteria, say like a dollar volume or they're no longer listed on uh, one of the major exchanges, something like that. Um, so your algorithm, uh, while it may set sort of a, a base universe as that Q tradable stocks US, it needs to, to check on a relatively regular basis, um, make sure that the names it's holding are still in that, uh, in that universe. 
So if you have a strategy that trades something like by like every, once every two weeks or, or monthly, um, you probably want to have uh, some extra uh, rules in there to sort of check uh, on a again on a regular basis that um, that the names you're holding are still in that universe. The position concentration rule, as I mentioned earlier, means you can't hold um, uh, more than five percent of your portfolio value in a in a single stock. Um, this is one of the more straightforward uh, rules in terms of um, in terms of following it in your algorithm. So, yeah, it, once you're using the order optimal portfolio function, um, there's a constraint called uh, position constraint. And then you can just call uh, dot with equal bounds and specify some uh, sort of an upper and a lower bound. So again, if you're new to the platform, uh, we typically denote long positions with a positive weight and short positions with a negative weight. So in this case, we're saying our uh, our minimum weight is negative 0 0.01, which means uh, the the least will will invest is uh, one percent uh, in a short position, and then the max long position size is the positive 0 0.1, so that'd be a long position of 1% of our portfolio value. Now, I mentioned the rule is a uh, maximum of 5%, and in this example, I'm using uh, 1%. Um, this is because the position value can, uh, can drift. So if I hold a name right at that 5% limit, and the next day, that stock goes up in value and my my portfolio as a whole goes down in value, I'll actually have more than 5% of my portfolio invested in that name. So I'm giving myself a bit of a cushion and just in general, uh, I'm trying to mitigate my position risk by holding a more diverse set of names. Um, the next one is the uh, long short rule. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, the 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 rule is that your long and short position values um, cannot be more than 10% different from each other. Another way to phrase this is that your uh, your algorithm cannot have more than 10% net dollar exposure. Um, and the best way to follow this constraint is in again in optimize. There's a constraint called dollar neutral, um, and this one just attempts to constrain the portfolio at equal uh, long and short. Weights. There are some modifications, uh, some arguments that you can pass to dollar neutral. One of them allows you to specify sort of a tolerance or like how, how different your long and short books can be. Um, I'm just leaving it at the default to try and keep them as uh, equal as possible. Um, and similar to the position concentration, as position values change, your exposure to one way or the other um, can change. Uh, so. I, my, my advice for the contest would be to uh, try and stay as equal as possible. Uh, the turnover constraint, um, or uh, criterion I should say, is again the 5 to 65% mean daily turnover. Um, the and there's a couple ways that you can uh, get within these bounds in your in your contest algorithm. Um, if you're unfamiliar, one of the, the basic functions of the Quantopian API is schedule function, which allows you to uh, essentially decide when you're going to rebalance your strategy. Um, for the contest, you probably want to be somewhere in the range of daily to once every two weeks. Um, anything slower than that, and you might have a hard time meeting uh, the lower bound of 5% mean daily turnover. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of up to you to, to figure out um, what, what gets you to those bounds. Another, another really important uh, part of meeting this criterion is actually the, the frequency of your alpha signal. So if you're using quarter, like a quarterly fundamental field um, that only updates once a quarter, uh, you might have a hard time you will have a hard time meeting the lower bound of uh, turnover here. So in that case, I'd recommend using a couple of different fields or maybe also adding in a, a comp some sort of daily signal, either price-based or sentiment-based or some sort of other data. Um, but essentially, the combination of, of scheduling your function and uh, doing research on the, the turnover of your, of your signal itself 
um, are really important to um, to meeting the to falling within these bounds. Uh, the next one, leverage. So again, you have to be between 0.8x and 1.1x um, gross leverage, which means uh, essentially you're either you're you're spending roughly all of your cash um, at all times, or I should say, all of your um, your your yeah your capital is invested in assets. Um, uh, in the optimizer, there is a constraint called max gross exposure, which uh, will help you to meet the upper bound on leverage. So I set it at 1.0. The rule is at 1.1, again, because of um, the what I mentioned with position concentration, where the, the values of stocks can, can change. Actually, in this case, it's also uh, when you place an order, you might end up filling at a, a price that is uh, different than what you expected, depending on how fast the order fills. Um, so that one, that rule of 1.1 X gives you a bit of a cushion, but really what we're looking for is for, um, all contest algorithms to be invested at about 1.0. Uh, for the lower bound, the best way to meet that criterion is to make sure that your, uh, your objective to the optimizer has, uh, has values for uh, a large number of assets. So. Again, the, the optimizer tries to uh, sort of solve your solve for your objective function uh, subject to the constraints that you supply. Since we're going to be supplying many constraints for the contest, um, it's important to give the optimizer options. I should say that's sort of uh, an odd way of looking at it, but that kind of that is what it is. Like you're the the more constrained it is, the more options you need to give it, um, and so providing. Either if you're using maximize alpha and providing uh, alpha values for lots of names, or if you're using target weights, again, passing weights for a lot of names, it's a good way to make sure that you meet the lower bound. Uh, this next one, beta the spy. Uh, if you follow the community, there's been some discussion about this one a little bit. Uh, the I think the, the rule is pretty straightforward that you have to be between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. Um, but there's been some interesting discussion about how to, how the, what the best way is to meet this uh, criterion. So um, there is a, a tool in order optimal portfolio called, uh, oh, sorry, I should say a constraint called factor exposure, um, where you can sort of define your own version of beta, which I've done in this sample with uh, a, a simple beta factor in pipeline. And you can tell uh, the optimizer to constrain the, the portfolio based on the historical beta of the names that you are uh, providing in the objective. Um, now, I think at this point, it's still a bit of an open question how effective this is. And I think it really depends both on your signal and your, uh, your universe, how effective using historical beta is to um, predict the, uh, the, the forward looking beta of your portfolio. So like technically I'm, I'm actually passing the per asset betas here. So I kind of have a correlation for Apple and for Microsoft, et cetera. Um, and then all of those are being combined to try and, um, uh, ultimately constrain the beta of my portfolio, but the optimizer itself can only constrain on a position by position basis. So it's, it's, it's not clear that in all situations, I should say it is clear that in, in, in there are certain situations where this does not work. Um, so this is just one way of doing it. It might work for you. Um, if it doesn't, uh, I'd recommend going to your alpha signal and looking if that signal is inherently beta neutral or if there is some sort of uh, tie to the market in some way. Um, we're working on a content piece uh, that sort of gives an example of how to look at this at an earlier stage. Um, and I think there was a community member about a year ago now that uh, coined, I, I think he coined it uh, himself and called it beta phishing versus, uh, or sorry, uh, beta phishing would be once you have the signal trying to remove beta from your portfolio in the algorithm versus writing or having a signal that is inherently beta neutral. Um, if you have one that is inherently beta neutral, uh, that is uh, that is probably the the uh, the ideal situation for the contest, and then this is sort of just one tool to try and uh, remove it on the portfolio level uh, later. 
Um, but if you are uh, a little overwhelmed by, by that, there are some, uh, some examples that, can, um, that you can look to for help. Uh, the next one is the risk model exposures. So uh, I mentioned before the Quantopian risk model and how there were a series of five style factors and uh, 11 sector factors. They're listed here. Um, your exposure to each of the sectors has to be between negative and, and positive 20%. And your exposure to the uh, each style has to be between negative and positive 40%. Um, the best way to, uh, or I should say similar to beta, if you have a signal that is inherently neutral to each of these factors, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, but the, uh, the in an algorithm or in Optimize, you can use the, a, new, a relatively new risk API, which allows you to get definitions of each of the factors and provide them as constraints similar to beta on an asset by asset level. Um, and your portfolio, uh, will hopefully have a better chance of uh, staying within these bounds. Now, like, like beta, since you're passing per asset and historical values, there's no guarantee that um, using these constraints will actually keep you within the bounds. However, um, I think we found that the, uh, the, the risk factors are a lot less volatile uh, per asset than beta to spy is in many cases. Um, or I should say using historical per asset exposures is uh, more of a strong indicator of the, um, the portfolio exposure, especially for uh, the slower moving risk factors. Um, so using this API is usually a pretty good bet to stay, um, to stay within the bounds. Uh, and then again, in this lesson, I think there's uh, a little bit more flavor on exactly how you can tune it to your liking. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend looking through this lesson. And then the last one uh, is the positive returns criterion. And uh, I don't really have any tricks for this one. You have to write something that makes money. And uh, if, I, if I had a great answer for that, I, I'd share it. But Or I don't know if I would. But, <laughs> uh, but this one's sort of uh, where it's on you to, uh, to find something that, uh, that, that produces uh, money consistently or positive returns consistently. Um, Again, technically for the contest, this is checked over a, a two-year back test, but in order to succeed in the contest, it, it's gonna have to keep making uh, positive returns in the out-of-sample period as well. Um, and then the last lesson of this tutorial doesn't talk about a criteria, any one criterion in particular. Um, instead, it, uh, it, has, it links to uh, a notebook, which you can use to test your algorithm now to see if it meets all of the criteria, and if not, it, sort of tells you which ones which ones failed and, and by how much. Um, so I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna, if you click this, it essentially clones the notebook in your, uh, in your account and you can, uh, you can run it on one of your own back tests and I'm gonna show you what, what that looks like. So um, the, uh, for, those, for those who haven't seen it yet, the getting started tutorial was, uh, we, we totally rewrote it um, about four months ago, sorry, about four weeks ago. And uh, the algorithm at the end of the tutorial, which you can clone in uh, lesson seven, actually meets the contest criteria already. Um, so I cloned it and I ran a, a two-year back test on it um, over the weekend. So I ran it from roughly two years ago to the February 2nd. And to, to see if it meets the criteria, I'm highly highlighting sort of this last ID after the slash, which is my, my back test ID. Um, and I'm gonna copy it and move it into um, the, the notebook that I, this is, this is the same notebook that I cloned from here, uh, but I already ran it, so you don't have to, to wait for it to run. Um, and I can you know paste that ID in here and then go run, run all. And that will run all the cells in the notebook. Um, you can ignore, this code if you'd like. This is what's actually sort of uh, measuring the constraints. Um, and at the bottom I get uh, sort of a report card where it tells me um, which criteria, criteria uh, have passed or failed. In this case, they, they have all passed. Um, and then it sort of gives me what my score would look like uh, out of sample. And so this score comes from everything after the, the first two years of the back test. So it's assuming that 
um, it was a, a two-year backtest that was generated in the contest, and that uh, sort of this was the date that I submitted it. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. I I did skip one part earlier, which is actually submitting to the contest. So I'm going to go back uh, quickly and just run through that. So if you if you want to submit to the contest, if you have an entry that you think meets the criteria already. Um, you should test it. You should clone this notebook. Lesson 11 um, in the contest tutorial is also in the forums. Um, you should clone this notebook, run, run a two-year back test and with default slippage and commission, run it through this notebook. If all the criteria pass, you should submit an entry. Um, you can name your entry something here, uh, then you sort of select an algorithm, uh, uh, and then you pick a back test and uh, it shows you the, a snapshot of the code, um, entry, uh, and then I, I click submit here. Um, and once I do that, I can actually go to the there's a there's a section on your dashboard called pending and withdrawn. Um, I'm actually not allowed to enter the contest, so I don't have any pending entries. But if you did submit an entry, you'd see it appear here. Um, once the contest starts on February 16th, pending entries will get picked up in uh, sort of after each trading day and evaluated for the criteria automatically over a two-year back test that you'll have access to, um, and they'll be scored as well if they pass all the criteria. Leading up to the 16th, they're just going to sort of sit in pending right now, which is why I recommend you uh, you run them through the notebook so that when the 16th hits, you'll you'll know if you pass those criteria or not. Um, you can have up to three entries in the contest at a time. Um, if For those of you who had participated in the old contest, this is a fresh three entries, so there's no tie to the old contest at all. Um, and if you submit one before the 16th and decide also before the 16th that you want to submit a different one instead, there's a, there's a withdrawal button that appears with that pending entry that you can, um, you can click to withdraw. And you can do that as many times as you want up to the contest. So. Uh, my advice would be to submit as early as, as possible and then go back and edit it later if you'd like. Um, if you withdraw an entry or if an entry fails to meet one of the criteria once the uh, contest gets going on the 16th, you'll see it appear here under withdrawn entries um, where uh, it'll sort of give you a message of both you know, what happened, either you withdrew it manually or one of the criterion uh, was not met, and if it's... Uh, one of the criteria that's that's a problem. It'll kind of give you a link to um, to one of the tutorial lessons to try and help you uh, meet that one. And then once the contest gets going, if you have entries that pass all of the criteria, you will uh, see it appear under your active entries section, um, and there will be some you know some things on this page to show you both how it's performing and. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, there'll be a graphical representation of how it's performing and, and your score and all that. Um, and again, on a nightly basis, people will be ranked, our contest participants will be ranked based on their, their top scoring algorithm. So you might have three in the contest at a time, and on any given day, we'll take your one that has the best score on that day, and that will be what determines your rank on that day. Um, and then you'll appear on the leaderboard, and uh, I think that's it. Um, okay, well, so we haven't received any questions yet, but if you do have a question and you want to submit it now, we can, um, we'll wait a, a couple minutes to see if any come in. And um, like always, I just want to remind everyone that this webinar was recorded and we will share it via email and on our platform um, after it is all ready. And so we'll just, yeah, we'll wait a couple minutes and see if any questions come in. I'll also add that if you don't feel comfortable asking a question over this medium, you can uh, email into feedback or support at quantopian.com and uh, or post in the forums. And you can go ahead and say, uh, Jamie told me to do it. Please get him <laughs> to look at this, and I will, I'll take a look at whatever your question is. Um, and yeah, I'd say uh, the, the earlier you submit, the better at this stage. And uh, we're excited for things to get going on the, the 16th. And, and I think there was a question in the forums about the prizes and when they start. And the, the first day, like we will be awarding prizes on the 16th after uh, the, the market closes.
All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining. Um, like I said, watch your email for a recorded version of this. And um, also check back to see a list of our upcoming webinars. And thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Paige. Thanks, everyone.